functioning of sovereign power on Moses' behalf. Moses had nothing to do with what happened. He was just an observer of what God did. And it was a miracle, very convincing to the monarch. Pharaoh finally, eventually, he let the children leave Egypt because of the mighty miraculous signs that Moses called Moses to do. Moses called the miracles into being and God performed them. So God told Moses what he was going to do. Moses spoke what God said and it happened. The great power of God was demonstrated without Moses even lifting a finger. He just stood there. He spoke. He spoke. And that's what we have to do. Another example in the Old Testament is the prophet Elijah. This gift of faith is beautifully known to us in the life of Elijah, God's prophet. In 1 Kings chapter 17, First Kings chapter 17, Elijah was hidden away in the wilderness with nothing, nothing to eat, and there were no bakeries or shops close by. The Lord caused the ravens to bring meat and bread to Elijah. This was a miracle that the ravens did not eat the food before it reached Elijah, because that is their natural way of doing things. But God is able to take what ordinarily happens and change it to suit his purposes. So the unordinary, remember, the gift of faith releases divine protection and provision. It's power. Elijah, he didn't do nothing to get his meals. God knew he had a need. He was tired. He had run from Jezebel, wanted to kill him. He was also in a place thinking he was the only prophet standing to proclaim God's word. And he was tired. He wanted to give up. He was weary, and God calls him to rest. And he provided what he needed. Food and something to drink. And when he would get up to eat and drink, the angel of the Lord told him again, rest. Because the journey that is before thee is too much for you right now. That's what he'll do for us. There was no labor on his part, none whatsoever. Here we find that not only did God supply Elijah with his bread and meat here, but also when the brook dried up, what did God tell him? Arise and get thee to Zarath. Behold, he had already commanded a widow woman to sustain him. Isn't that something? That he will continue, he, he continued to supply his need. And that is um, 1 Kings 17, beginning at the 8th verse. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidion, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate, of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil and a curse. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die, that we may eat it and die. So here, that's why we got to be careful of what we say. She was speaking death on herself and her son. She said that we may eat it and die. How many times have we said words such as, I'm broke? And guess what? You're broke. 
How many times have we said, I'm sick? And you feel yourself sick? I'm tired? And you just tired. You ain't done nothing. And you just tired. You have no energy. I have learned to say lately, I am not tired. I am not tired. I have to say it out of my mouth. I got supernatural energy. I am filled with energy to do what God called me to do. Refresh me, renew me, revive me. I am not tired. I am not accepting. I No, I'm mm -mm, not even a headache. I got no headache. The symptoms may be there, but I'm not accepting it. I'm going to say what God's word says. By his stripes, I am healed. He also says, I can call those things that be not as though they were. And so here, she was saying something she had no knowledge of. Carnally. Verse 13 says, And Elijah said unto him, Fear not, said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first. So see, he didn't accept the part of eating and dying. He was on that part of, I'm going to make me and my son a cake. But he says, make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me. Now here is the prophetic word of the gift of faith. He said it and it was so. He said to her, and after for and, and after make for thee and for that son. He spoke it. He was speaking the gift of faith. That all the needs should be supplied. He spoke it. He says, for thus said the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And here's where her obedience kicked in. Now, granted, has she would have continued to argue and would not have done what the man of God said, it wouldn't have came to pass. Verse 15 says, And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her household did eat many days because she was obedient by what was spoken. She didn't say, man, you crazy. I just met you. I don't know you from Adam. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell you what I got. I'm trying to tell you. I only got a little bit. And you're trying, me, trying to tell me to do something else. You're trying to tell me to stretch the little that I have. But she was obedient. And it was for her benefit. That for many days. Verse 16 says, And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elisha, Elijah. So Elijah was speaking what he heard. He gave her instructions. How many times have we received instructions and we ignored them? Thinking, I ain't going to do that. They don't apply to me. That might not work for me. Whenever we have that mindset, that is the, that is the enemy playing tricks on you. That is deception. The thing is, is scripture says obedience is better than sacrifice. And so guess what? Because the one who is given the instructions is a willing vessel of the most high God. And he's giving us what God wants us to have. It's not his words, it's God's word. So I'm not even taking you at your word. I'm taking God at his word. You're just a spokesperson. And so guess what? Through your vessel, God, you said this. Through your vessel, you gave these instructions. I'm following those instructions. Another example Oh, let me back up to this because I found this very interested in this book. In response, Elijah spoke words of faith and comfort to her. He said, fear not and go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me and after make for thee and for thy son. Elijah told her to make him a little cake first. You know 
When we pay our tithes to God first, we are going to get first treatment from him. God will treat us that way, and I want first-class treatment from God. So with the author writing that, I'm like, look how he, he, he pulled in what God requires of his people. Tying it in. And I'm a firm believer, if, if you don't have an income, give your time. Give your time. Give your services. I believe that when you have a willing heart to give, God will honor that. You might not have it, but God will honor that. Give him your time. Give him your service, and God will honor that. He will bless you to be in a position to give a seed. And then when we say seed, seed isn't always money. You might have some information I need. That's a seed. I'm, I'm planting a seed of information. I'm giving you tools. That's, that, that's a seed because it's going to grow. It shall not return unto him void. Elisha is another example found over in 2 Kings chapter 6. And we're going to close on this one. And then when we come back together next week, if the Lord allows us to, I want you to read 2 Kings, and this is quite a bit of reading, 2nd through the 13th chapter. And here's why I want you to read that area. Because there are several instances where Elisha utilized the gift of faith. Here's something else. Seven of the nine gifts of the Spirit functioned in the Old Testament. The only two gifts that did not function in the Old Testament were the gift of tongues and the interpretation of tongues. All of the other gifts, the other nine functioned in the Old Testament. So in reading areas from, it's in 2 Kings chapters 2 through 13, I would like for you to notate how many times Elisha demonstrated. How many times? You are going to be amazed about the work that God did with Elisha. We know that after Elijah came off his 40-day fast, that time when the raven fed him, and then another time he went into the cave and God told him to go and he was going to meet up with Elisha. There's this one book out called Elijah and Elisha, A Sign and a Wonder. And it talks about their ministry time together. And so that's our, that's our reading for next week. I wanted to put it out there and then I'll give it again at the very end. But now I want us to take a quick look and we looked at this actually last week. We took a look at 2 Kings chapter 6. So we've already looked at this and we actually utilized this same example when it came to the axe head. Another example of the gift of faith in operation is in 2 Kings chapter 6. Elisha had his Bible school boys out cutting down some trees. When one of the students hit a tree with an ax, the ax head flew off and fell into the Jordan. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down the stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. So in that instance, it was the gift of knowledge. It was current. And also by faith. All he did was he put something down in there. Now we know, and I don't know nothing about no axe head. Listen, you can put something down there if you want to. It's done, it's all the way down. As a matter of fact, we probably done hit it and it's done moved. <laughs> and it's so further out and so further out and 
you just around there, you might as well say, okay, it's gone. You might as well just pay them. But it was the gift of faith. The man of God, Elisha, acted in the gift of faith, illustrating the power of that gift. So these seven gifts in the Old Testament did not function in the same way as in the New Testament. They came upon men only at special times and special situations. So I believe that that is absolutely awesome. There were only two individuals in the Old Testament, actually within the, um, with Moses parting of the Red Sea. And then you have the prophet when he said, I hear the sound of rain, Elijah, dealing in that kind of gifting. So next week, for this week, I want you to read 2 Kings chapters 2 through 13. And notice how many times Elisha demonstrated the gift of faith. He also functioned in the word of knowledge more than anyone of his day. So read beginning with the time he spent with Elijah when he was called into service unto his death and see how many times supernaturally he understood things from a distance. So that's going to be a very, very good study. It will help us to better understand the spiritual gifts as we're talking about now the power gifts being the gift of faith, the gifts of healing, and we're going to look at also the gift of miracles and pray, 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 pray for those spiritual gifts. Allow the Holy Spirit to really move in your life in those areas. All right. Do we have any, any comments or anything that, that you'd like to share with us on tonight? Amen. Anybody? Did anybody get? Did anybody do the reading from last week? Romans. Did anybody do that? Did anybody read Romans twelve and three? Amen. Amen. And so I'm sharing and asking that we read these things and come back and interact in Bible study so that we all may grow under spiritual maturity. Um, I'm not meant to grow alone. I'm not meant to receive the blessings alone. When I pray, when he uh, utilizes uh, myself and others to share a prophetic word over the house, it's supposed to extend and flow out. And I want you to receive yours. I don't want to receive by myself. That's a part of James uh, says, pray ye one for another that ye may be healed. That covers everything, every area of your life. So I encourage you to please take time and do the study and read the scriptures that we have given out so that we all may grow unto spiritual maturity. Amen. All right, we're going to close out in prayer. And then I will close off the live. Once again, I thank everyone who has tuned in tonight. I see we have Orlando on the line in Georgia and North Carolina. And uh, praise God, um, even here for New Jersey and those who are in the building tonight, we thank you all so very much for tuning in to Bible study. And right now we're going to have a word of prayer so we may close out. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time and we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, Lord God, for what you have released, Lord God, unto us all, Lord God. I pray that our hearts and our minds are open to receive your word. I thank you for pouring out a blessing of the knowledge of your word that we don't have room enough to receive. I pray, Lord God, that we take your word in, that we, we seek an understanding, that we may apply it into our lives. 
that our hearts and our minds may be enlightened and enriched in the knowledge of you. And Lord God, that we will in turn share your word, that we will share of your goodness and of your mercy, that we will teach others in the mighty name of Jesus. And oh Lord God, I speak a blessing for everyone, Lord God, under the sound of my voice right now. Oh God, that a release, Lord God, of grace and mercy upon your people. Lift the burdens right now in the name of Jesus. By your will it is done, Lord God. By your grace there is peace and there is restoration unto your people tonight. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord God, wherever they may be, you know what they have need of spiritually and naturally. You know where they are, Lord God. You know what need needs to be met, Lord God. I lift up the bereaved tonight, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, I lift up the families tonight, Lord God. Let them come together in the spirit of unity, Lord God. Let there be love and peace, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I pray right now, Lord God, that right now somebody's life is changed. Somebody will come, Lord God, to accept you as Lord and Savior tonight, Lord God. And as we leave, Lord God, this place, but never your presence, Lord God. I pray that it is not the same when they go home. I pray that it is better when they get there, Lord God. I pray that there is a breakthrough when they walk over the threshold. I speak peace unto their sleep, Lord God. Let them dream dreams and visions of what you're going to do in their life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Good night, everyone. Have a blessed night. We began to talk about, we, we've been in a study talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we've broken the gifts of the Holy Spirit down into three categories. Those categories are revelation gifts, power gifts, and inspiration gifts. And so I want to go just quickly over to... scripture for our spiritual gifts and that's going to be over in first corinthians the 12th chapter and i just want to read this out as our foundation for where we are and what we are discussing during this series first corinthians 12th chapter and i'm going to start at the fourth verse now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the spirit of the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severely as he will. So these are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Verse 12 goes in to tell us the importance of all these gifts. For as the body is one and have many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is there therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, it is therefore not of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? 
But now have God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. And so the gifts of the Spirit, not everyone is going to have the same gift. And even if there are two that operate within the same spiritual gifting, they're going to operate differently as the Holy Spirit releases them. But we need one another. It is for the body of Christ. And so one can't say, because I don't speak in tongues, I don't need the gift of helps. Yes, you do. One can't say, because uh, I don't operate in the, 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 the gift of healing that the gift of knowledge is not needed it's all needed as it is a part of the body of christ so we have covered the revelation gifts we did that uh, for about three weeks that covered wisdom knowledge and that also covered um uh, uh the other gift of exhortation now we're in the power gifts power gifts are the gift of faith it is um, where we're going to start off today it's a power gift the gift of healing and miracles those are power action gifts and on last week and if you are online if you did your homework I asked um, everyone to read a certain passage of scripture it was quite a bit, but it was to cover instances where the prophet Elisha operated in spiritual giftings. Now, I have gone through chapters 2 through 13 in the Second Kings, and we're not going to go over all of them because there are quite a bit where he was operating in a spiritual gift of knowledge as well as a power gift of faith. So I do know, uh, and, and if you did it in your online, go ahead and put it up. Uh, just give me the scripture reference. And then after we cover a few of those, we're gonna move forward because I, I definitely wanna shed some light on the gift of faith as well as wisdom being at the beginning so the power gifts, the, the, the Holy Spirit, the gifts did not start in the New Testament. They were at the beginning in Genesis. And so we have to definitely lay that foundation and make sure that we are clear on that. The Holy Spirit is a part of the Trinity. It is the Father, the Son, and it is the Holy Spirit. They were there at the beginning. So, uh, Pastor Allen, do you have any examples just give me the scripture text. Yes. Okay. Second Kings, mm -hmm. the sixth chapter, verse one through verse seven. Okay. And then I went to the eighth, the eighth verse to the twenty-third verse. Okay. Second Kings, the eighth chapter, verse one through verse six, and seven through sixteen. It also has reference where it was the gift of knowledge. Okay. Amen. Amen. All right. So uh, let me ask again, uh, did anyone, we just had some that just came in and, and I want to give you a time to look. Did you do the reading for 2 Kings, the second chapter through the 13th chapter? No. All right. Let's take a look at 2 Kings 2 and 2. We're just going to go over a few. Second Kings 2 and 2, it says, And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha, Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. Here is, and it goes further into the second chapter, here is a time that God is getting ready to take Elijah from the earth. He's going to be caught up in a whirlwind. As we read through the second chapter, we're going to find that 
from place to place, uh, a group of prophets would say unto Elisha, you know today that your master is going to be taken away from you. Well, God had already said it to Elisha. Elisha already knew. That's why he would not leave his master's side.